Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Richard and this is Lap of the World. You join us now for part eight of what I thought at some point was gonna be like a three to four part series covering the major service that I've been DIYing on my NSX back here at 280,000 miles, excuse me, 289,000 miles, give or take. Uh, she was due for a timing belt water pump and several while you're in there items that I have been covering. Uh, I have links in the description to the entire series. I also have links in the description to the series sponsor, which is ATR, nsx-parts.com for NSX parts. They've got you covered, whether it's OEM, aftermarket, or custom. Check them out if you get a chance. But what we're gonna get into today on this video is actually starting on some reassembly. We've done the timing belt, and we've done the water pump, and then in the last video I did a, uh, last video I did a valve adjustment. Uh, in that valve adjustment, just as kind of a piece of trivia, I think only about, only about a third of them were any kind of out of spec. Nothing was way out of spec. Uh, I would guess that the furthest anything was off was probably in that like, you know, like a single thousandth of an inch off. Uh, and granted, the range of adjustment is only like two or three thousandths of an inch. Uh, but there were a handful that were a little bit tight and I think only one valve that was a little bit loose. Uh, but all of them came into spec just fine. So all of them should be identical with their either intake or exhaust brethren at this point. And then I went and torqued everything back down. So uh, that's kind of good, you know, again, it, the car didn't sound like it needed an adjustment. And the last time that a valve adjustment had been done on the car was at around 230,000 miles, sometime 2011, 2012. Uh, so they seem to hold their adjustment pretty well over time, at least when you drive the snot out of them. <laughs> with some irony, I guess. But uh, getting started with reassembly, one of the first things we're going to do is put some timing covers back on the car. And that's where we need to cover a little bit of, uh, have this thing oriented correctly this time, uh, timing cover trivia. So this is the old cover that I have that's coming, that I'm taking off of my car. However, it is one of the new style covers. There are two styles of timing cover because they made a revision to the design of the water pump sometime in the early 90s, early mid 90s during the NSX's production run. Uh, and they moved the location of the weep tube on the, on the water pump. It used to be up in this area and they moved it down here. So if you look at your timing cover and you have a hole up here with hopefully nothing sticking out of it and you have somebody like a maybe a not so tidy looking hole down here with a tube sticking out of it, then probably what happened was you got the updated water pump or your car got the updated water pump, but didn't get the updated timing cover. Uh, that means it probably was done a while ago though, because since I've owned my car in 2008, anytime you ordered a water pump, it came with a new style cover uh, to, that you would change out then and have the, uh, this new weep tube hole in the correct location. Uh, if you have the old style cover and you have a hole here and something sticking out of it and no hole down here, then your uh, water pump is old AF at this point. <laughs> uh, I, I guess there have been a couple of questions in the comments about, you know, the, the uh, service, actual service interval or the necessary service interval. And again, I don't want to make, this is not service advice make that very clear. Um, but I think the consensus, I think the oldest one that I found, I went, actually went and looked on NSX Prime on the forum uh, that actually goes back that far. And the oldest belt that I found where somebody bought a car and realized that the previous owner had just never had it done was I think 19 years. Uh, not a whole lot of miles as you might expect in that case. Uh, maybe 30,000 miles on the car in that interim but 19 years old, the timing belt and the water pump were, were nearly two decades old when they were changed out. And oddly enough, by accounts of that, and then another one I found that was between 15 and 17 years, it's you know, difficult to corroborate, uh, two different accounts there of things being that old and still being in relatively good condition or not, not uh, 
visually or by kind of casual manual inspection not in any state of serious degradation. You know, would I trust one that old for the way I drive my car? Heck no. But uh, just some interesting data points that there's definitely, you know, in that 90,000 mile, seven year, well, 90 to 105,000 miles, depending on NA1 to NA2, or that seven, six to eight year uh, service interval that's specified, there's definitely an engineering safety factor in play there, I think. Uh, so if you come across a car or buy a car that's it's never been done or it hasn't been done in a gajillion years, uh, don't panic, but definitely get it done at your convenience. Uh, it's relatively, relative to the current market value of these cars, it's cheap insurance. But new style timing cover, new style water pump obviously on the car. So the next thing we need to do is kind of outfit our new timing covers with their gaskets and then move towards actually sticking them back on our car. Now, this is known to be a little bit of a cantankerous task, which is why it's getting more or less its own video. Uh, and you may or may not actually see why, but let's get started either way. So installing the gaskets on the uh, timing covers is not really a big deal. I've kind of mostly done it on this uh, lower timing cover. And you have these little circles here, circular cutouts around the edge and they correspond with some little circular, um, I don't know what you call that, like conjoinment areas in there. And you just kind of snap there, smush them in place. And the rest of it makes a bid for freedom. And it requires a little bit of pressure to get it right, but if, again, if you just kind of smush it on there and then you just tuck, tuck it around the edge. And this uh, lower timing cover has probably the most complicated gasket and it goes all the way around. Um, let's see. It goes all the way around here. You can see it comes in here. This is up towards the top of the water pump. Sorry, I'll orient this up and down correctly. So this goes over the top of the water pump here. Then it comes down, goes around the outside. Now these top edges here, these will actually interface with the upper timing covers there. Then this comes back in to touching the, uh, the block and parts of the oil pump and then uh, runs all the way around the edges here. Uh, it doesn't seem, you know, I anticipated potentially needing to kind of glue these in place, quote unquote, with Honda Bond. However, at least on this lower cover, it doesn't seem like that's gonna be necessary. Uh, they definitely all kind of, it, it seats in there pretty nicely and seems fairly stuck in place. So let's move on to the upper covers at this point. So the two upper covers, we have my original uh, front upper cover and my new to me rear upper cover, courtesy of ATR. Uh, and then we have four gaskets. These gaskets are getting kind of hard to find. I have heard that you can uh, substitute, I think eighth inch uh, vacuum tube for these things where there's just a straight section of it. Uh, it's probably a substantially trickier on the lower timing cover. So the lesson here is that when you are removing your old covers, if they again, hopefully have gaskets on them in the first place, uh, do all you can to uh, conserve these gaskets because there are not many of them out there left at this point, it appears. With that said, uh, again, NSX Parts did have some. Uh, so I had a full set of these sent to me and I'm now going to put them on in their respective positions. So the gaskets are directional and they're, they're held in place by these little spiky things here. And then they're oriented by these notches that correspond to these uh, protrusions on the uh, gasket itself. And then you install them just by sort of stuffing them down in there. Uh, there's not much, uh, not much science to it, I don't think. Uh, but you do wanna make sure that they are, uh, are sort of firmly in there and not, uh, not just loosely, they need to be tucked all the way down. All right, well now that I flipped this guy around to be in the correct orientation, they do only fit one way. So you kind of pay attention to the, the length of the tail on either side of the little protrusion, uh, should get things directionally correct. Uh, so that means that these really are fairly idiot proof, I say with some tongue in cheek. Uh, because they really only go in one direction. And I will say that they've actually, they actually seem to fit in here fairly securely. You know, I take this guy up and turn him upside down and shake him a little bit. They're not coming out. 
Uh, so brand new, at least, these gaskets are fairly, I, I, I would almost call them tacky. They have a very soft compound uh, that seems to fit in the groove fairly securely. Now, if you're reusing them, you know, rubber, typically speaking, will kind of harden over time. So if you're reusing some or if they've gotten stuck to the, uh, the little aluminum plates that are on the, that are the backside of the timing cover assembly, uh, then you might need to supplement the stiction with a little bit of Honda Bond. But mine, I think I'm just going to put in as is because they feel fairly secure and I, I don't feel like I'm going to be losing them at any point in the process. Uh, but we'll find out once I get to that point in the process. For now, let's go over to the car. We have one more thing to take care of before we can put them on. Of course, we currently have our crank pulley in place that we were using to reset our timing and also uh, to rotate the engine around as we were doing our valve adjustment. Of course, to put the timing cover on, we need the pulley out of the way, so we need to re-uninstall that and break out our special tool with, uh, I, again, I didn't tighten it down at all, so it should be fairly simple to remove. We're gonna get it off the car, and then the first thing we're gonna do is put the rear timing cover back on. So with the crank pulley balancer back off of the car, a couple of quick notes before we move on to installing our lower timing cover. The first one is this grommet here. Uh, this is just a rubber seal that will seal around the weep tube from the water pump. Uh, you'll want to install that before you go to put the timing cover on, and I've taken the liberty of putting a little bit of silicone around the inside just to ease passage of the tube. The second thing has to do with this guy. This is a timing belt guide. You have two of these, one on the inside and one on the outside of the crank gear on, that drives the timing belt. Uh, the one on the inside obviously is captive between the gear and the oil pump. This one, you need to put it on uh, after you install the timing belt, but before you install the timing cover, and then it is held in place once you put the, uh, uh, the balancer pulley back on and tighten it down but this does need to go inside the timing cover. There was a little bit of confusion looking at some of the other walkthroughs is I do not see this pictured. Um, so I kind of wonder if it's one of those things that, you know, might fall off or, uh, or otherwise get overlooked. But uh, just make sure again, you should have one of these on, on the outside of that, uh, you know, that crank gear as well as on the inside. All right, so we have the lower cover sort of in place and affixed with a couple of screws at this point. Uh, I will own up that that was way more fiddly than it probably looked on film. A lot of it was really, it's more of an issue of perception really than reality. I think in, in reality it went in fairly easy, but it felt like it didn't because the part has a little bit of a bow to it. So if I push it in here, that puts this uh, screw guide flush with where it mounts. Um, so it was just, but it was just a little bit of this, uh, of this cover having a little bit of a curve to it. Um, you know, just probably from manufacturing process or whatever, but with a couple of screws in, it does look like it fits like it's supposed to. It's not, uh, touching anything it shouldn't, uh, and it is touching everything that it should, uh, where I have it tightened down. Now this over here, I'm going to wait to tighten down, uh, until I have the upper cover on this side on, and then that will get, uh, snugged up when I'm mounting the air conditioner. Um, tensioner bracket on there. Uh, one other note that I'll make, you can see over here, maybe, uh, that is the bottom edge of the rear upper cover that I stuck in there 
before I put this down in there because it's way easier to kind of position, pre-position that uh, <laughs> for future manipulation before you put the lower cover on because otherwise you end up with a little bit of a restriction uh, between here and the frame. So uh, the other thing I'm going to want to do now that I have the lower cover on is go down here and put the grommet on the end of the uh, tensioner bolt. This grommet, I feel, is another one of those oft overlooked items that does help keep dirt, debris, and uh, excessive moisture away from the timing belt itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on the rear upper cover next, and I'll show you how that goes. So before attempting to install the upper cover on the front bank, uh, I did run a light coating of silicone, being very, very careful not to get any on the uh, belt itself. I uh, ran a light smear of silicone down the gasket to hopefully ease installation because it is a little bit of a tight fit. All right, well, we have the front cover affixed, and I will say that was so far the most physically demanding part of this entire job. Just from the amount of contortion and, uh, you know, finger stress, I guess I would have to call it. So the order of operations that I found uh, worked for me anyway, was your move to put this in, is you kind of stick it down in here, rotate it up this way, and then slide it over into place. Now in my case, I reversed course a little bit and went ahead and installed the uh, AC tensioner bracket down there while before I put this on, or before I put this on the second time. And that was so I could a little bit more firmly affix the lower cover and get it in position because I think it's, it's kind of bow and wiggle was actually hurting things, not helping things. Sometimes leaving things loose helps. Uh, in this case, I think it was actually hurting me. Um, so, I pushed this down into position, got those bolts at least started. It's still loose, so I can wiggle the tensioner in and out to fit this in behind it. But yeah, the move is to kind of slide it down in here, rotate it up. You end up with it basically vertical this way. You kind of pull it forward to get it over the top of that, and then rotate it back down into place. Uh, so this end of it kind of spin, swings up into place when you're done. After that, I started this bolt. And then these bolts here on the face were very difficult. The one in the front, the one in the very front top corner, is nigh impossible to get to. Um, and with, the, with sort of the new gasket swell pushing this up, uh, it was impossible to start that without doing some things first. So what ended up working, though, was first install loosely this bolt. Second, jam a mallet. <laughs> between, I can get it to focus down there, jam a mallet then between the top of the cover and the bulkhead up here and kind of smush it. If you push the mallet gently that way, it's pushing down on this uh, top edge of this cover. Very gently, you don't want to break anything, but what that does is it seats the cover on the gasket a little more thoroughly and lets you put in these two bolts. Once you have these two bolts in and uh, you know, with the mallet in place, uh, you tighten these down. And that, in my case anyway, pulled things into line so I could a little bit more easily get to that last top corner bolt there. So uh, I don't honestly, because of the, just the pure blind nature and contortions you have to do to get to that top bolt, I'm wagering that's gonna be the hardest thing. Um, we will see because there's the, the same top corner bolt 
on the rear bank is kind of reputed to be that way. But that's what I'm going to get to next, so I will report back once I've uh, uh, <laughs> done that with my findings. All right, rear cover on. That's all of our timing covers. Now, for those of you, I think there was some expectation of some schadenfreude when it comes to doing the, uh, the rearmost bolt, which if you're looking from the wheel well, it sits somewhere like here. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure. Maybe my, uh, you know, having owned an MR2 Turbo before this, my blind bolt Kung Fu is just that strong, but uh, it took me about two tries and a total of probably 10 minutes uh, to get that entire rear timing cover on. It was far easier than the front cover. Um, so I was actually able to get two hands on that rear, uh, rear bolt. Uh, this may be cheat mode a little bit because I don't have a drive shaft in the way, but I was able to fit a hand up through here and another hand up through here. So this hand I could kind of pull down on the top of the top on top of the cover. And then with this hand, I could kind of manipulate the, uh, the little mounting ear and uh, thread the bolt in at the same time. And that was, again, that was very trivial feeling compared to that front upper frontmost upper bolt. So with all of my own timing covers now back on the car, I could definitely kind of reflect and, and I could certainly see how this has the potential to be the most frustrating part of the entire timing belt water pump job just because of how seemingly ancillary the covers are to the mechanics and how much of a pain they are to get back on. Um, you know, literal pain as well as... Uh, <laughs> as metaphorical pain uh you know definitely have some raw fingers after that but i think with the kind of appropriate techniques which i was hopefully able to kind of demonstrate maybe some tricks that will help you uh, you can get them back on i could certainly see why these lead to people leaving off the gaskets because with the gaskets on it's definitely um you know it definitely increases the difficulty quotient versus being able to just kind of drop things in place with no gaskets. But the gaskets do serve an important function, uh, and you should definitely make sure you have all of them uh, when you go to put yours back on or some suitable substitute if they aren't available at the time when you do yours. Um, so with that said, uh, we can now kind of proceed further with our reassembly. I kind of already put a couple of the, like the um, air conditioning tensioner back on and some, um, well, not really any other ancillary stuff, but we can kind of get on get on now with reassembly in earnest in anticipation of getting our valve covers back putting those on and then so on and so forth so we may have a couple of videos that are kind of all over the place i'm going to continue this series though until i'm actually done or at least until i'm i have everything buttoned back up from the timing belt and water pump probably the last big hurdle there is going to be bleeding the coolant system and i will have probably have a, a singular video dedicated to that entire task because it is definitely non-trivial on any bit engine car, and the NSX is no exception. But for now, we're going to call it. Again, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out our sponsor, ATR, at nsx-parts.com. And otherwise, uh, subscribe so you don't miss any more of these videos, and you don't miss it once we actually finally complete our maintenance cycle and are able to get back in the, out in the world and check some more tracks off of our list. So with that in mind, I thank you again for watching. I'm Richard, this is Lap of the World, and I will see you all in the next video, if not at the track.